I fall apart miserably if my environment is off, if things are disjointed and messy and filled with friction, or when trivial things just take too many steps or too many clicks to get through. And so I made sure that my environment, my ecosystem is set up right, where everything is fluid and working together, my home, my office, my studio, my desk, even my bag. I commute four hours a day. The bag has to be right inside and out. And those things have always been easy for me to figure out because I'm organized and neat. And I always know how I want to set things up around me. But this one thing I had struggled with was my digital ecosystem. Nothing seemed to work quite right. And I didn't know what right looked like. And it's probably because all of my jobs were always Windows based. And it felt like that was the way. Well, that was a mistake. Eventually, I came to realize that Windows isn't an ecosystem, and it's not even part of one. It's a place where a bunch of apps, and some openly hostile and always angry, can be launched from a shared screen. There's friction everywhere. Simple things don't exist, and everything takes a million clicks. But what could I do? Well, you know, the answer was staring at me this entire time. My Apple journey started as rewarding, but soon became transforming. Switching to Apple, cold turkey, was one of the smartest decisions I made to organize my life. And what locked me in was how seamless, intuitive, and fluid the Apple ecosystem is. At its core, it's all about how various devices interact with one another, where each device knows its place, and it also knows all related devices, and it knows their location, status, and capability in relation to itself. This is where hardware and software are tied together so seamlessly, working so smoothly, it feels like magic. And so today I want to share 10 of my favorite and most used features of that ecosystem. Before we jump into the fun stuff, let's take care of a few boring bits. For any of this magic to work, your devices must be signed into the same Apple account and connected to iCloud. iCloud and Apple account manage the instant sync across your devices, and they also hide the devices to each other. So let's open your Mac settings and make sure you've got AirDrop and Handoff turned on. Go to General, click AirDrop and Handoff. Make sure Handoff is enabled. Then under AirDrop, choose Contacts Only. This way strangers can send you weird stuff. Lastly, let's go to Displays. Click on Advanced. Enable all options listed under Link to Mac or iPad. And then make sure Handoff is enabled on your other devices. And on your iPads, also enable continuity. All right, with all this out of the way, let's go. Number one, universal clipboard. This is one of those things that shouldn't exist, and yet here we are. When I copy something on one of my devices, I can paste it into any of my other device. This works with everything that can be copied and pasted. And here is how. Highlight and copy an item on one of your devices. On your other device, open the app where you want to paste it. Right click or tap and hold and then select paste. Pretty cool, right? And it's a massive time saver for me. Number two, AirDrop. Hands down, this is the best and easiest way to move files around or share stuff with anyone nearby, from contacts to photos to videos to documents. If you're near one of your devices that's unlocked, the AirDrop option will be in the share menu. But there is another trick. If you bump your iPhone with another iPhone, you can share what's on your screen with the other person. Or if both of your phones are locked, your phones will exchange your contact info and you will get to see this cute light show. Super handy. Number three, handoff. Handoff is another amazing, time-saving, and very useful feature. It allows you to start an activity on one device and immediately continue on another. Handoff works with all of Apple apps and also a number of third-party apps. For example, very often, I start an email on my phone only to realize that I need more space for it. As soon as I start typing away in my phone, a handoff icon pops on my dock. When I click on it, my Mac will open my email draft, the one I just started on my phone. Pretty cool, isn't it? And it works with all other apps, even Safari. You can hop right onto the same web page you were just browsing on your phone or iPad, and it works in the other direction, meaning Mac to iPhone or iPad. I personally prefer to create directions in Maps on my Mac where I can calibrate my route just so. When I'm ready to go, I pick it up on my phone. The link will sit on my lock screen or I can get it in the app switcher like this. Swipe up to the app switcher view. The hand of handle will be at the bottom. 
tap on it and it will open maps with my directions on my iPhone. And when I'm finally ready to roll into my car, it will connect to CarPlay without me lifting a finger. Number four, use iPhone as a hotspot. This is not really a new thing, right? Well, hotspot on Apple devices comes with brains in it. My commute is long and I use hotspot multiple times per day. And here's how it works. First, make sure that all your devices have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth turned on. You can connect manually, automatically, or be asked to join. And here's how you can set this up. In the Wi-Fi settings on your Mac, go to Ask to Join Hotspots. If you selected Ask to Join, your Mac will give you a prompt if you want to join the recognized hotspot. If you select Automatic, the connection will just be established automatically. And here's the cool stuff. The hotspot on your phone does not need to be on. And when you're done and close the lid on your Mac, the hotspot will disconnect and turn off. So fewer clicks, fewer taps, and no accidentally drained phone battery because you left your hotspot on. You don't have to do anything, it just happens. Little things with brains. Number five, making and receiving calls on my Mac or iPad. This is new and it instantly became my favorite. Mac and iPad were able to receive calls for a long time now. iPhone would just move calls seamlessly to your Mac or iPad if this is what you were using. That was an incredible experience. Just tap to answer, no pulling the phone out of my pocket and fiddling with it. Starting with OS 26 though, Apple took that already awesome feature to the next level. We can now make calls right on the Mac or iPad using the new phone app. We've got a proper dial pad, call history, and voicemail. This is just wonderful. I love it. Number six, universal controls. This allows you to use your Mac peripherals, your mouse, keyboard, trackpad on iPad. Because we already calibrated the Mac settings earlier, you all sat on that end. But let's check it on your iPad. Go to settings, general, AirPlay and continuity, turn on cursor and keyboard. And now you can just push the mouse cursor over the edge of your Mac screen onto your iPad. And the keyboard is already connected as well. Number seven, sidecar. Universal controls we just talked about simply allow you to use the same keyboard and mouse on the nearby iPad but they still act as two separate devices. Sidecar, on the other hand, allows you to extend your Mac's display onto the nearby iPad. When I travel, I can instantly create two screen setup, like this. In settings, go to displays, click on the plus sign at the bottom, select the iPad you want to use as a second display. Your Mac will wake it up, no wires, no settings to figure out. Easy, right? Number eight, continuity camera. This feature can be used in three helpful ways. First, document scan. I remember the awful experience every time I had to use Adobe Scan before I learned about this. I had to create an account and go through a bunch of steps and taps just to save my scan where I wanted it. And forget about scanning into an existing or open document. Now, how about not doing any of this nonsense? On any of your devices, go to your files, navigate to the folder where you want to save your scan. On iPhone, click the three dots on the upper right. Select Scan Documents. Point to the document. Your iPhone will do the rest for you, even if your camera is not perfectly aligned. Same thing on iPad. But what about Mac? There's no camera. Or is there? Again, go to the folder where you want the scan to be saved. Right-click, select Import from iPhone or iPad. Choose the device. I prefer iPhone, it's just easier to maneuver. Click on Scan Document under iPhone. Your phone will immediately come to life and the camera will already be fired up in the scan mode. All you have to do is just point to the document. Second feature, insert a scan or a picture or a sketch right into a document. While working on a document on your Mac, right click and again select Insert from iPhone or iPad. There you will see the same three choices as before. Take a photo, scan documents or add a sketch. Again, your iPhone's camera will open up in the right mode and you can insert that image or scan right into your document. Or if you need to add a doodle or perhaps a signature, your iPhone or iPad will open up a sketchpad. And lastly, you can use your iPhone as a high quality webcam for your Mac. Now my studio displays have built-in cameras that are perfect for calls. However, when I'm on the work call, I don't want people to see my YouTube sad or my camera rig. So I set up my phone on a small tripod facing the other side of the room. There is no special setup or wires. I just go to the camera selection on whatever video app I'm using and select my iPhone. It can be FaceTime, Teams, Zoom, Google Meets, whatever you're using. Super easy. 
Number nine, auto unlock. Just like I can unlock my watch with my phone, I can quickly unlock my Mac with my Apple Watch. As long as my watch is on my wrist and unlocked, it will unlock my Mac as soon as I wake it up. No passwords or fingerprints. To enable, go to settings. Touch ID and password. Turn on unlock with Apple Watch. Number 10, AirPods auto switching. This list would be 100% incomplete without mentioning AirPods. AirPods seamlessly move audio connection to the Apple device you start using. You can nod or shake your head to accept or reject calls. Your AirPods will pause your audio to answer an incoming call and then resume where you left off once you hang up. And here you go, my 10 most used Apple ecosystem features. Switching to Apple changed how I operate. It made things easier and kind of fun to discover hidden features. It helps me go from idea to plan to execution with much less friction. And I hope it will do the same for you. I will see you next time. I love you.